In this video, I talk about how you can change the actions for the buttons on your quiz results slide. Okay, let's get started here. So, I had a question from Jane. She asked, can the actions for the buttons on the results slide be altered? Well, Jane, first of all, uh, to answer your question, yes, they can. Uh, there are some limitations to this, but you can control uh, what the buttons uh, do and which buttons appear. So let's get right into this. I've got my standard uh, Learning About Canada project file open. Uh, in this particular version of it, I've got a couple of content slides and then a short quiz at the bottom here. Just asked a few questions. And then, of course, we have our quiz results slide. Now, other than the theming that's been done here, um, you know, I've got a custom theme uh, set up in this case here. Basically, this is default or as default as Adobe Captivate gets. You have, an, um, in this case, a continue button, which I've gone ahead and relabeled as exit because I'm going to use it a little differently than the, the default settings. And then I have a, a review quiz button. And these are typically the uh, the controls that you'll see. Usually this is labeled continue, but I've gone ahead and changed the label. Now to actually control what these buttons do and which buttons appear, you need to go into your edit drop down menu and select preferences. Alternatively, you can press shift F8 to bring up the same window. And this will bring up the, uh, the preferences window here. I'm just going to move this over to the right a little bit so that we can still see the buttons that are on our quiz results slide presently. The two areas that we're going to focus on are both in the category of quiz and the subcategory of settings, as well as the subcategory of pass and fail. So right now, the quiz uh, exit button that I've labeled exit instead of continue is still set up to if passing grade continue. And of course, if failing grade, the same button would apply. It would be uh, continue in this case as well. But let's change its functionality first. So let's first of all think about a passing grade. So if a user passes the quiz at the end of the project, um, you can choose any of these options down here. Now, typically what I do is I choose the exit option. But of course, you're not just limited to that. You can choose an advanced action if you wish. You could just have it continue. That is certainly an option that's available to you. And you could actually have slides that go beyond your final quiz results slide. So maybe you have you know, a glossary or a summary of the course or maybe a conclusion video at the end of the course. All of these can go past the quiz results slide. But most cases, many people, of course, simply exit the course at this point because they've satisfied the requirements of the course and the information has been submitted to the learning management system in question. So I'm going to set this up as exit and I'm going to change uh, one of the functions here um, of the review or I'm going to actually take away the review quiz button. And to do that, I go to the settings option here. And I can uncheck allow users to review the quiz. Now I do this in a lot of courses and I'll tell you why. The reason being is that when you review the quiz, sure you can see what questions you got right and you can see what questions you got wrong, but it also reveals what the correct answer uh, to those questions are. And through just basic memorization, um, you know, the users, the learners themselves, can remember what those answers should have been, simply retake the quiz and then score 100% potentially. But the question remains, did they actually learn anything? So in my case, I prefer to actually have them retake the course from the very beginning. And there's a way you can do that. The first thing, of course, we're going to take away the ability for the user to review the quiz just by unchecking this box here. And we'll go back to the pass or fail uh, option here. And we're going to allow the user to uh, take this 
this course an infinite number of times. Alternatively, you could choose, you know, two or seven or whatever the number is, but I'm going to choose infinite in this case. And then it's going to take away the default action for failure. And then we're going to show a retake button. And I'm just going to hit OK, and those changes will now come into effect. So what's happened is the uh, the review quiz button has disappeared because I've taken that functionality away. And then I have this retake quiz button. But I actually don't want them to just simply retake the quiz. I want to take them back to the beginning of the course where they can learn what they should have learned the first time. Uh, and maybe they didn't pay close enough attention or uh, maybe they just need to review it one more time. But we're going to change this, this functionality so that they can do that. First of all, it says retake quiz. So we're going to relabel this uh, under the properties inspector for that button, uh, much like I did for the continue button is now an exit button. I'm just going to call this something else. We're going to uh, call it um, restart course, let's say. It could be anything you want, but that's... Uh, that's an option that's available to you. Now, how can you get it to do that? Of course, because uh, the default function of this button is to take you to the first question in the quiz or the first scorable object in the course. Well, that's actually quite simple. All you need to do is put a scorable object on the slide where you would like to take them to, where you'd like to jump them back to. And we're going to use the title page, the very first slide in this course, to do exactly that. So let's go up to the slide one. And to create a scorable object, we just need to add something that has an action associated with it. So I'm just going to put a button here. Now, what we want to do is have uh, some settings for this button. Now, this button my hope is that it never gets clicked. Uh, there's no reason for it to be clicked. It just needs to be on this slide. So we're going to, first of all, take away the caption because we don't want it to say anything. Uh, we're going to take away the appearance of the button by making it um, completely transparent. Uh, there's no outline for it, no stroke, so that's fine. And um, what we're now going to do is change the actions associated with it. So in the event that someone accidentally clicks the area here, we're just going to we're just going to change the success action to no action. So that even if someone does click it, it's not going to do anything. The other thing we need to do, uh, we're going to disable the click sound because we don't want if someone does accidentally click their mouse in the center of the screen um, you know we don't want them to hear the sound associated with clicking a button and we're just going to make sure that include in quiz is checked off as you can see it is here and we're going to uncheck add to total and the reason we're doing that is that we want this to be the um, the first scorable object in the course but we don't want it to affect the score. So even though it does have a point of uh, a value of one, it's not going to add to the, 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 the quiz results slide. So you won't see um, a score associated with this button. And in fact, you can even go so far as to throw it up in the upper right hand corner or upper left hand corner, and maybe even go so far as to uh, uh, make it so small that, you know, people don't even see it at all here. So we can resize it so that it's just real tiny there and has no real impact to the course itself. So that's pretty much it. Um, what's going to happen now is that we can preview this course and see what those changes that I've done uh, do to the effect of the course. So let's do a preview of the project right now. So here's our title slide. Uh, again, there's a hidden button on here. You can't even find it with the mouse. But let's go through the course real quick here. So I'm just going to bypass all this and go straight to the final quiz. 
I'm going to purposely fail this quiz. So I'm just going to choose uh, incomplete or wrong answers. Uh, in this case here, Toronto is the wrong answer. And we'll say Prime Minister Paul Martin is also a wrong answer. So as you can see here, I have a zero score. I didn't pass, obviously. I, I failed. The maximum score is 30. So again, that button we added to the first slide is having no impact on the, uh, the potential maximum score. Uh, each question is worth 10 points. And there's, uh, uh, well, I have to change this. The total questions is four. So you may want to take that away. Uh, so that's not visible, but the maximum score is still 30. Um, at this point now, I can either exit the, the course, which would return me to my LMS. It would close my, my pop-up window. Or I could restart the course, which is what I want to do in this case. So I'm going to click on that. And again, it brings me back to the very first page of the course. And I'm going to click Next. And this time we'll pass, and we'll see what the result is. So the official languages in Canada are French and English. Submit. The capital of Canada is Ottawa. And the head of state in Canada is Queen Elizabeth II. We'll hit Submit. And now this brings us to our quiz results slide. So I got three correct questions. Again, I'm going to take this away. Uh, or you could just put in some regular text. And now the only button that's here is an exit button. I've passed. Presumably, if this was set up with a learning management system, this information would be shared with the learning management system, and I've got 100% and everything's great. And I can now exit the course. And rather than just continuing with the rest of the course, exit will actually close the browser window and presumably return me to my learning management system. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was useful or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.